Good evening. I'm Rita Wilkins, also known as the Downsizing Designer. So it's Tuesday night. I do apologize for being a little bit late. Um, I um, this tonight is about transforming your home and your life um, when you downsize and declutter like a minimalist. So when you think back on the pandemic in this last couple of years. It really taught us many things. And perhaps one of the most important lessons certainly that I learned was to stand back, um, look at your life um, with a completely new lens and rethink what matters most to you, what's essential and what's not. So during the pandemic, many people chose to declutter their homes by removing those things that were taking up space and were just not important to them and they found that they just weren't essential. <clears throat> and they realized just how much space was being taken up in their homes with those things that they rarely used or that they, they didn't even need anymore. So what many also discovered is that by getting rid of that clutter, um, it freed up time, money, and also energy to focus on those things that did matter to them. So in many cases um, during the pandemic, they even realized how much more efficient and productive they had become because, because the clutter just wasn't bogging them down anymore. So what they were actually discovering and experiencing is essentially minimalism. So the less they owned, the more freedom they had. They felt more in control of their own lives, even in that dark period of COVID and they somehow felt lighter and in many cases, even happier. So I don't know if this happened to you, the more closets that you emptied, the more drawers you edited, or the more stuff that you just got rid of, the lighter and happier you became. So minimalism at its core is removing anything that you no longer want, need, or use. And those things that were, were weighing you down, those schedules, um, when you're overbooked. So when you let go of these, um, you're experience, you experience a simpler, less cluttered, and, and frequently more meaningful life. And over time, you can transform your life and your home when you declutter and downsize like a minimalist. So it changes you gradually um, because you focus more on what you need, what you don't need in your life. <clears throat> So how does a minimalist downsize and declutter? And how can you learn to enjoy living with less? That sounds like an oxymoron, certainly in our, um, you can learn to live with less. One, the first thing is the awareness of what you have right now. So when you look around your home, and I recommend that you do have and decide to do something about it. So decluttering ruthlessly, um, keeping only what you want, need, and love. How much you allow into your home in the future. So adopt that one in, one out rule and continue to edit weekly or daily. And then the third is to repurpose and make do. That good old fashioned word, make do. So don't, un, um, don't spend unnecessarily um, to you get more creative um, using things that you already have. Sometimes when you look in your refrigerator and certainly during COVID where we didn't have the ability to go out to the stores as much, you just get a little bit more creative when you look in your refrigerator and your pantry. An inch of your, of your home, um, make everything function. So there's no wasted space. There's no unused space. Each area has a purpose and each item has a home. So when and if you have decluttered and you know exactly where something is in your pantry, in your medicine cabinet, in your linen closet, um, there's a really great feeling about that because everything is functioning and everything has a home. So the fifth thing um, to do if you want to live like a minimalist is incur little or no debt. So buy only what you need by quality that lasts longer. And the sixth thing is to um, don't be concerned what others think. So if you're thinking about downsizing to a smaller home and you live in a big, um, big house right now, and if your neighbors all have those big houses, it's really just a matter of saying this move to a smaller home is best for you at this time of your life. So if a smaller home fits um, your current lifestyle, just do it. 
So a uh, seventh item um, on the list is to create boundaries. When you can say no to gift giving, that's a really hard thing for many of us to do, especially if you have grandchildren or, or you know, you just like giving gifts. Um, request instead experiences. And doing this without guilt is another thing you have to kind of work on. But when you say no to um, to gifts or when you say to too many, um, say no to too many social events that um, clog up your calendar, especially those that aren't aligned with what really matters to you. Um, the thing is like, why waste your time? A minimalist does not waste their time, their money or their effort with, um, with too many commitments or too much stuff. <clears throat> An eighth is to prioritize experiences. So what's better than time with family and your loved ones for more meaningful things? And they're certainly more meaningful than gifts, um, that, you might never use and they just kind of um, sit in the basement or in the attic anyway. So, and the last one is to learn to be content with what you have. So if you have decluttered and surround yourself with only those things that you want, need, and love, then you should have enough. And that's when you start to experience, I really don't need anything else. I have enough. I am enough. And those are two big um, nuts to crack when you are becoming a minimalist. So transform your home and your life. Um, the transforming it is a process. It does take time. And I will tell you that the first couple of steps that you take to downsize and declutter are probably the most difficult. You know, But it does get easier and easier over time to let go, especially as you begin to experience the benefits of that simpler, less cluttered life. So remember, when you surround yourself with only the things you need and love, you're not giving up anything um, when you get rid of that excess stuff because it's excess. Rather, you're making room for those things that matter the most to you, and it doesn't get any better than that. So I hope this is helpful to you. I look forward to talking to you again next week. Um, this will be converted into a blog on my website, Rita Wilkins at RitaWilkins.com. And if you have anything that you want me to cover, we will be creating a new editorial calendar for September. So um, just email me at Rita Wilkins at RitaWilkins.com and I will respond and perhaps that'll be what we talk about next month. Have a great week.